Number 1, Bible Reference Near the end, in order to protect Arthur Radley from intrusive publicity, the sheriff devises the fiction that Bob Ewell fell on his knife, and killed himself. He tells Atticus to let the dead, bury the dead. This comes from Matthew 8:22. but Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead, bury their dead. One interpretation of the passage, is that people should put their responsibilities to God ahead of all others, in this case ahead of family obligations. But as a phrase, it has come to mean forget the past, what's done is done. When May Eliul is sworn in during the trial of Tom Robinson, if you look closely you can see that she does not actually place her hand on the Bible. Instead, she lets it hover just above. As she knows that the testimony she was about to give, accusing Tom of assault, was false. Number 2, Atticus Finch Atticus Finch was modeled on Harper Lee's own father, Amos Lee, an attorney and Alabama state legislator, whose 1923 defense of a black client partially inspired the novel's trial. Like Amos Lee, the character of Atticus Finch was not only an attorney, but also a state legislator and a widowed single father. Gregory Peck met with Amos Lee, then 82 years old, and formed a strong bond with him. Unfortunately, Lee died while the movie was filming, so Harper gave Peck her father's watch and chain. The first scene that Gregory Peck shot, showed him returning home from his character's law office, while his children ran to greet him. Author Harper Lee was a guest on the set that day, and Peck noticed her crying, after the scene was filmed. He asked Lee why she was crying, and she responded that Peck had looked just like her late father. Lee explained that Peck even had a little round stomach, like her father's. That's not a pot belly, Peck told her. That's great acting. Number 3, Boo Robert Duvall stayed out of the sun for six weeks, and dyed his hair blonde for the role of Arthur Boo Radley, who, according to the story, spent much of his life as a recluse. The character of Radley is based in part on Harper Lee's recollection of Alfred Boulware, who lived with his parents in a dilapidated, mostly boarded up house, just a few doors away from the Lee house. His father kept him confined to the house, after young Alfred was involved in an incident of vandalism. Described in the book and in the movie as leaving the house only at night, because the sun hurt his eyes, this might suggest that Boo Radley suffered from albinism, lack of pigment in the skin, in the hair and in the irises of the eyes. Number 4, Dill The character of Dill was based on Truman Capote, who had been a childhood friend of Harper Lee. He was sent to live with relatives in Lee's hometown, each summer. Capote, in turn, based one of his characters in his literary work Other Voices, Other Rooms, upon his recollection of Harper Lee. In an episode of American Masters, called Hey, Boo, Harper Lee and To Kill a Mockingbird, she stated that Dill was the only character she had fully based on a real person. Number 5, Another Atticus Although Gregory Peck's inspirational performance as Atticus Finch, turned out to be a perfect highlight to his long career. Rock Hudson, Universal's number one star at the time, lobbied for the role, and was considered by Alan J. Pakula and Robert Mulligan. Spencer Tracy was the first choice of Pakula and Mulligan, but it conflicted with Tracy's existing film schedule. James Stewart was also offered the part, reportedly second, but told the producers he believed the script was too liberal, and feared the film would be controversial. Number 6, The Speech Gregory Peck's summation speech, which runs for 6 minutes and 30 seconds, was nailed in a single take. Brock Peters, started to cry while filming his testifying scenes, without rehearsing it this way. And Gregory Peck, said that he looked past him, instead of looking at him in the eye, to avoid choking up himself. The courthouse that was copied for this film, still stands in Monroeville, Alabama, and is now a museum dedicated to the book, this movie, and the life of Harper Lee, and the people represented in this work. Number 7, The Oscars In 1962 at age 9, Mary Batum received an Oscar nomination, for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, lost to 14-year-old Patty Duke, for The Miracle Worker. Both films are based on women who were born in small towns in Alabama. 
Gregory Peck was convinced that his friend Jack Lemmon would win the Best Actor Oscar for his searing portrayal of an alcoholic in Days of Wine and Roses. Peck remained stunned when he heard he was the winner of the much-coveted trophy. Gregory Peck stated in subsequent interviews that he believed what won him the Academy Award was the scene where he quietly walks out of the courthouse after losing the case while the upper gallery stands in silent respect and the reverend says, Miss Jean Louise, stand up. Your father is passing. Number 8, Friendships Mary Badham and Gregory Peck became close during filming and kept in contact for the rest of Peck's life. Peck always called her Scout as her character role, while Badham called Peck Atticus. Brock Peters, who played Tom Robinson in the film, delivered Gregory Peck's eulogy on the date of his funeral and burial. In art, there is compassion. In compassion, there is humanity. With humanity, there is generosity and love. Gregory Peck gave us these attributes in full measure. Thanks for watching.